Hello YouTube, Flashlight Enthusiast here. Today I would like to show you the differences between the original BLF Q8 and the newly released upgrade of the Sofern version, the Q8 Pro. So without further ado, let's get started. I got both of them from the Sofernlight.com. Uh, here you've got the original one and a newer box with uh, software mod to quality innovation value we've got the Q8 Pro mind you that the original one was the 5000k version the improved one, the newer one, the Q8 Pro uh, has 6500k version only for the time being but I believe it is a potential to actually uh, release uh, this one also in a 5000k version so let me show you the original one first so this is the box nothing fancy here plain cardboard software and standard box when you open this up obviously uh, I already unpacked it so it is uh, we've got batteries included alright in the kit version so we've got four software and batteries let me show you real quick everything works smooth original BLF construction produced by Sofern so as you can see everything works it looks just like the Torfire did for 18650 Sofern branded 18650 batteries 3000 mAh button top to get the good contact on this brass ring alright also have double springs down there excellent for low resistance so everything done right very well okay let's see what else we've got here in the box so first of all some instructions to remove the insulation bubble wrap for protection double o-ring replacement or actually triple o-ring replacement uh, and spare switch cover manual and cheat sheet the improved newer version Sofern Q8 Pro first of all flashlight is different but uh, believe me or not inside there is the same battery configuration and the battery tube actually is identical so uh, obviously here we've got some difference apart from that we also get some insulation for the batteries bubble wrap for flashlight protection instruction for removing the insulation USB to USB-C charging cable again some triple o-ring replacements and spare button cover a little bit different as you can see in design and manual without cheat sheet alright so let's look closely at those two You can clearly see the, the difference but overall design as you can see it's almost identical obviously battery tube is uh, identical as you can see with some minor differences in engraving but apart from that these are identical all right but as you can see the heads are a little bit different uh, Sofern stick to the green LED under the switch but these are much dimmer in the lower mode but as you will see right now it can be much brighter if you go to the higher settings of Unreal uh, as you can see also the cooling fins have a little bit different design uh, there are fewer of them in this head section but as you can see also the geometry here of the reflector section is a little bit different so definitely the head was redesigned but on the other hand this uh, 
dimensions of the head is also identical and as you can see here the length still is identical okay so minor differences uh, the key difference is actually the LEDs the reflector UI but also USB-C charging port instead of no port on the older version tripod mount was the same a little bit different design here but apart from that as you can see pretty much similar flashlights so let's go through the key differences first of all the newer software in Q8 Pro runs Unreal 2 so not even standard Unreal but the newest Unreal 2 version with improved ramping and turbo activation which I really much like about it uh, because there were some problems with Unreal 2 that uh, you couldn't activate the turbo mode when the flashlight was off and then you had to go all the way up to the ceiling to activate the turbo mode now it's fixed you can actually activate the turbo mode straight when the flashlight is on in any level double tap will go to the turbo mode and uh, well from off double tap will go to the max ramp and then double tap again to go even higher to the turbo mode so this one was improved and I really appreciate the effort and uh, that they did it because now the flashlight is much more functional than the older versions of Unreal 2 uh, second thing is the USB-C charging port you can charge your flashlight uh, with almost 3 amps charging speed but uh, so it takes around 5 hours to fully charge your battery the next improvement is that you can actually use the USB-C charging port to as, as a power bank function so you can charge your phone or other USB-C uh, device via this uh, USB-C charging port with USB-C to USB-C charging cable which is obviously not included but uh, I think you can get it easily everywhere uh, the third minor difference is the LEDs as you can see the newer version uses the Cree XHP 50.2 3 volt version of emitters so default one is 6500k but uh, there are some other versions available of this LED on the market right now even on the software website so I believe in the future we might even see the 5000k version or um, something in between like 53 to 5700k version of uh, tint and as you can see uh, the original one uh, featured Cree XPL HD uh, 5000k emitters so around 5000 lumens the newer version with the Cree XHP 50.2 LEDs uh, can run can achieve as high as 11,000 lumens and if you use high discharge batteries like the software that's provided uh, the brightness can be even better so wow this is definitely a nice improvement here and you will see in the beam shot section that you can clearly see the difference although the range uh, the throw of this flashlight are actually almost identical the newer version will give you much more spread beam with light going everywhere not just in the hotspot and some side light like in this original BLF Q8 which was still pretty nice universal beam pattern uh, to be honest but this one just outperforms it in every single dimension and I really like the upgrade I mean I like flutters and uh, I like to have evenly spread beam across the whole spectrum so um, for me this is definitely a worthy upgrade in terms of light distribution uh, and uh, although the throw is identical uh, you get pl plenty of light everywhere so I, I like this aspect as you can see uh, you may probably know that uh, the marketing pictures of the newer uh, Sovereign Q8 Pro featured identical reflector as the original so smooth reflector but uh, both samples I got actually feature orange peel reflector for better beam uh, spread and uh, removing some beam artifacts due to this uh, larger dome Cree XHP 50.2 LED uh, so I think this is a good move uh, definitely like that mm, and I think the smooth reflector would get much worse beam pattern so uh, I think this was a good move from Sofir uh, and as you can see we 
we also get some anti-reflective coating on both of them. Original one did not feature this one, but since it's produced by Sofern, I think they apply the anti-reflective coating by default on the lens. One thing worth mentioning is that the BLFQ8 featured uh, Norseal M UI, and the newer one is the Unreal 2, uh, so much more flexible and customizable UI on the newer one. Uh, although it does not feature one thing that Narsil had a big advantage on, and this is the timed step down, right? So this one actually can be set to three, four, five minutes of step down, uh, and uh, it will go as high in output as it can through the set amount of time. But on the other hand, the uh, Unreal 2 will give you only a uh, temperature configuration step up. So you can go as high as 70 degrees, which I set this one on, uh, and uh, it will power the turbo mode until the temperature is kicked in and uh, then it will lower the output. So let me show you the runtime graphs real quick. Uh, as you can see, uh, the original one, I set this one for like three minutes step down. And as you can see, it pretty much held the turbo brightness of 5000 lumens for the given amount of time, so 3 minutes. Then the body temperature achieved 47 degrees, so I suspect I could go even for like 4 or 5 minutes and the flashlight will still be below 60 degrees, which is an amazing result. And obviously we know that the BLF members can design the flashlight that way so that it uh, has amazing performance. Uh, but on the other hand, as you can see, uh, after the step down, it held around 1400 lumens and then the linear driver kicked in. So as you can see, the brightness decreased and uh, linearly as the battery's voltage drop. On the other hand, uh, we've got this Sofern Q8 Pro, 65,000 Kelvin. And as you can see here on the runtime graph, uh, it is temperature control step down. So I set the limit for the 70 degrees, which is the highest amount you can set in Unreal 2 for safety reasons. And as you can see, even it does have almost over twice the power of the original BLF Q8. The step down occurs at almost two minute mark, so one minute and 53 seconds. From over 10,000 lumens, uh, the step down to a bit over uh, five, thousand lumens and then uh, I measured the temperature of around 55 degrees obviously uh, the temperature later stepped up a little bit but did not exceed 59 degrees and as you can see it almost stabilized at around 1500 lumens for around two hours so obviously the runtime is a little bit shorter for four and a half hours for the BLF Q8 but with declining brightness and here we've got uh, some stable, almost increasing brightness for around two hours and uh, obviously a little bit higher. Uh, so I think in terms of runtime graphs, as you can see, I think this is a worth improvement. We've got much more power, a little bit more stabilization uh, and uh, obviously thermal capabilities are also uh, quite good, if not better. All right, guys. So let's go to the forest and show you the practical difference of these two flashlights uh, how about the range the light distribution and overall performance let's go This is the original BLF Q8. This is the turbo mode, around 5000 lumens. Nice hotspot here, as you can see. Plenty of side light. Definitely good universal beam pattern and overall excellent construction designed by the BLF forum members. Produced by Torfire, then Sofern. So let's take a look at the upgraded version. And this is the Sofern Q8 Pro. Let's go to the top ramp. And now the turbo mode. 
Wow, that's amazing. You can definitely see the difference here, huh? Much more side light here, holding the turbo nice. And still we have some range to it, about the same beam distance, around 500 meters, but a lot more light in the side, so even more universal beam pattern. You don't get this massive hotspot and some nice side light, but you get even bigger hotspot, brighter hotspot and much more light at your side. So for me this is definitely a worthy upgrade. And I like that this flashlight does not get hot so easily, so quickly. So the software definitely folded up nicely and designed the flashlight so that it will hold the turbo for quite a lot of time. This is good. Definitely, but still holding the brightness. So let's drop to the max run. As you can see, now the turbo moves again. And the fossil does not get that hot yet. I can still hold it without any problems here on the head. Still holding that brightness very well. Summing this up, I think Sofern did a good move to improve the original BLFQ8. Uh, it was long enough uh, on the forums to actually people experimenting with uh, reflowing the, these particular LEDs to the original construction, but they had to drill the reflectors to make a bigger hole, sourcing some different MCPCB for different LED footprint. So I think this is very thoughtful of Sofern to finally released the improved version with USB-C charging, Unreal 2 and obviously increased power uh, but not sacrificing the thermal performance uh, so still amazing uh, amazing result for 11,000 lumen flashlight to hold the brightness in turbo mode almost two minutes I think this is uh, something they did very well and uh, I can definitely re recommending uh, this uh, upgrade to you guys uh, even if you don't like the cool white uh, emitter option. Uh, I know your pain, I don't like cool white emitters that much, uh, but honestly I have to tell you that this tint is not bad even for a tint snob like me, uh, and uh, believe me or not I have some Michias and uh, Samsung LEDs and a lot of my flashlights and uh, I really prefer warmer tints, but this one is uh, not that bad judging from the beam shots you could see that this is almost like pure white tint and I think it's not that bad to look at. Firebomb feature is definitely uh, a good bonus for a modern flashlight uh, of this size. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button because more videos are on the way. Stay safe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try to answer them all. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.